The New York Knicks put a whooping on the Philadelphia 76ers in Philadelphia Friday night, 128-92. And we're here to talk to Brian Fonseca from the New York Post about this. Brian, what do you take away from this game, man? Yeah, it's uh, it was an ass whooping. It's like, let's be real. We don't need a lot of numbers tonight. We don't need a lot of advanced analytics or really any analytics at all. All you kind of need is a scoreboard and maybe just watch uh, some of the game. Mm. The fact that Julius Randle did not have a great game and it didn't matter at all, given the way Julius Randle's been playing, he's been great lately, right? And Joel Embiid also put up customary Joel Embiid stat line, right? Like he's still, you know, going for the 30 and 10, you know, streak or whatever. And it didn't really matter because they got their ass whooped. Knicks are still undefeated since getting OG Ananubi, yep. uh, which I think is noteworthy here. I don't think that's why they won this game. I think they just punched Philadelphia in the mouth. And Philadelphia reminded us why every single year when people want to put them as contenders, and we should do that because they have Joel Embiid, who's an MVP, Tyrese Maxey, who's a rising star, and is going to be an all-star this year. And every year, I am one of the many people who are skeptics of this Philadelphia 76ers team who looks at them and is like, hey, um, that's cool that they're great in the regular season, but I've seen them get punked in the playoffs year in, year out, literally multiple times. There's a couple of constants there, one of them being Joel Embiid, the main yeah. one. And we've seen this happen to them in May. They lost to Miami Heat, Boston Celtics, in embarrassing fashion, back-to-back years. Like th- This has been part of why they're a second-round-and-done team. And what this shows for the Knicks is, hey, um, there's some balance here. If Quentin Grimes can give you strong minutes, if Deuce McBride can give you strong minutes, and if Jalen Brunson could look like, well, one of the best guards in the NBA right now in terms of shot creation, in terms of getting what he wants, he, he was in such a rhythm. Like yeah. one point in the second quarter, it was unbelievable. It was like watching a dude at West 4th Street, and you know he's just going off, and it just doesn't matter who's in front of him, breaking everybody off the dribble, and just creating all these shots in that mid-range area that we talk about with Jalen Brunson, getting to the floater, getting to the mid-range jumper, hitting threes, yeah. like doing whatever he wanted. And this is the thing about the Knicks, where I don't think they're going to be you know, favorites to win the East, given the roster construction, much like, sort of what we've seen from the Heat, but they're a team that can push and bother and really annoy anybody, and they could potentially upset some teams if they play like the way they did tonight. Yeah, there's two themes here I really want to hit with you on. The first being holding Joel Embiid to 30 and 10, he's going to get his, but the fact was he was a a non-factor for being honest in the second half. The Knicks in the fourth quarter alone, obviously outscoring 35 to 16, is really when they pulled away, but... You know, and I even texted you, right? Are the 76 going to put a final run in this game? Are they, they seem to be cutting it a little bit. And then you're like, they could, but, and then you see the run that the Knicks go on, where a 21 to one run at one point in the fourth quarter. It's, it's impressive that this team is defensively sound right now. And we talk about a guy like OG Ananobi, how effective he is on the defensive side of the ball. But you also have guys like Quentin Grimes, who's a really good defender. Um, Josh Hart, 15 boards tonight. 15 and the guy who came off the bench that provided a lot of energy. And this was a night where I felt like he was the key, like him and Quentin Grimes were the, really the keys to this game where they were able to out hustle out rebound and just will their way. And like you said, to an absolute ass whooping over a very good 76ers team. Part of the concern with trading Emmanuel quickly was what's going to happen to their bench. And if their bench is going to play like this, they're going to be fine because Quentin Grimes was very strong in this effort. Josh Hart was very impactful. And the Josh Hart games that are most impactful is when he's getting it done on the glass in particular, when he's out rebounding centers, when he's out rebounding bigs on the other, on the other team. And when he's also distributing the ball, because I think as a passer, like he's somebody who can be a connector on offense. If we saw that tonight with the six assists that he got to only two turnovers, by the yep. way, the positive three to one ratio. And then Deuce McBride, obviously, he just got the extension. So, you know, he's going to be some sort of a factor. And he was very good, very good coming off the bench tonight. And I think this is sort of my question with this team is like, can the depth, can the depth really sustain itself and really just be a quality uh, add on to what the starting five is going to give you? And again, like the starting five wasn't wasn't like the be all end all for this. It was the bench to me because right. 
Julius Randle was really a non-factor tonight, and it didn't matter. OG Ananubi didn't give you a, a, a huge offensive punch. He was effective defensively, obviously. That's the thing about this team, though. The, the, the thing that I appreciate is that the really good Knicks teams that we've seen over the course of however many years, and we haven't seen a lot of them lately, but this appears to be one of the better Knicks teams that we've seen recently. And a big part of it, why, is because they have – legitimately one of the best defenses in the NBA when they're turned up to this level. Now, Mitchell Robinson is now no longer there. Yep. He's not going to be there for the rest of the season. But Isaiah Hartenstein has given you great minutes. Falling out. Isaiah Hartenstein is somebody who, if you listen to me uh, in, in my sort of bets beforehand, over two and a half assists, he killed that. And Isaiah Hartenstein is somebody who I thought going into uh, this stretch was already maybe the best backup center in the NBA, who I think could start on some teams, and he's proven that. The sustainability of how good he's playing, we'll see. But I think that they have a formula that could at least be a challenger to some of the top teams in the Eastern Conference if they get enough from their bench unit, their one through seven, one through eight in particular. It's going to be tough. It's never going to come easy, and it's not going to be like this very often. But I think Philly is a team in particular that they can match up well with because Milwaukee, Boston, Miami, uh, more so Milwaukee, Boston, they have things that have bothered the Knicks so far this season. They match up pretty well with the Heat, but where the Heat have Jimmy Butler, you know, playing at a Jimmy Butler level, then that's a little bit of a different story. But they can match up with these teams if they're getting enough from their bench, if they're getting enough from their defense, and if they're hustling to a standard of a great Tom Thibodeau team. Yep, and it's a great win for the Knicks to hang on themselves. Like you said, undefeated since they traded for OG Ananobi. They got the Washington Wizards tomorrow night in Washington, D.C. But, Brian, we appreciate you as always. You can catch Brian, obviously, on the Action Network along with the New York Post. Thank you for breaking this down, man. Anytime.